I've got my Arkham DAC connected to my PC using a USB cable which comes in, in the box um, that works fine it's, um, it's very good as a connection and it can go very high in terms of speed um, I've also got the remote control here which I'll uh, switch between the channels just so you show you how the lights work if I select um, a different channel Corax 1 or Corax 2, they light up in red. And if we go back to USB, initially it is, is, goes red, but as soon as, you, as it detects the music, it goes green. I've got something playing, so it's gone green. To use Bluetooth, you need to pair a device to it. Uh, in my case, I've already paired my iPhone to it but to go into pairing mode you select the Bluetooth input either using the inputs plus or minus or use the remote control so we can go to USB in my case and then via the remote control we go to Bluetooth to go into pairing mode you press the two input buttons together I didn't do that correctly, so let's try that again. There you go, uh, press them together. Now the device is in pairing mode. Uh, so if you have a device to pair, now it's time to do it. Uh, just as simple as that. So we go back to USB. So while it's playing, um, uh, there's, let, there's not a lot you can do from the remote control side of things. Uh, the only thing you can do is either control the volume or mute the device. Uh, in my case, because I'm using the fixed inputs and not the variable inputs, all you can do is mute the device. So if you mute the device using the remote, the light goes into orange. So I'm muted like that, it goes to play mode again. There are some other buttons on the remote like play, next and previous, pause, etc. Those are there for applications that um, support the protocol that uh, the device uses for those functions.
Right, we're going to have a look at um, the facility that comes with uh, the software, the ICOM software. And here we've got a few things we can look at. And the status is showing us the current sample rate being used. Uh, we can turn the device to be on all the time if we need to, but I haven't um, found the need to do that. This is uh, the format options. You got 16 bit or 24 bit. Obviously, 24 bit you get better quality. Streaming mode you can decide whether you need to be extra safe, so you, you, it creates a bigger buffer. Obviously, this take a little more processing power. So I've gone for the safe mode, and you can decide on the sample size of the buffer size rather uh, I'm not too sure how much difference this makes with a high spec machine but I've gone for this and I haven't found any adverse you know effects so this shows us the output in here you can turn off device master volume and I've experimented with these two and here you can bisect the two analog one and two channels uh, from experience I found that this turns the left channel down and the other one does the same for the right channel so those are the things that are of some use to you. This shows you your information about the device as we've seen already in the video. I've upgraded mine to version 1.92 in the firmware. Unfortunately the serial number doesn't appear here and I don't know how you can enter it to be available there but the serial number is on the, on the back of the unit. Um, I have registered my device with Arkham so in case of problems they would have a record of when I bought the device right that's the utility that comes with the um, Arkham software from the Windows playback devices we can see the devices that are alive I've got my optical connection to my amplifier this is a pair of headphone speak um, a headphone with a microphone and this is the Arkham DAC so if we look at the Arkham DAC properties in there we can see a few things we can have a look at so this then is the volume You've got some enhancements you can enable if you want to. Okay, that gives us a test. You can apply anything if you want. So this should be common to you how to set up all these values.